Hello everyone and welcome to my series, welcome to Cyrodiil. In this series we will be covering everything that is Cyrodiil related. So in this number one video we're gonna start with the very basics. What do the keeps do in Cyrodiil? What bonuses do they give? What do the scrolls do, the resource and the outpost? In the other series we'll be going more in depth over staging, siege tactics, rewards for PvP, where you can find gear rewards and how to make sure you stay alive when facing enemy zergs or when you are outnumbered, but you are, for example, not in group PvP, and I will be sharing everything with you guys. So first of all, I'm going to directly address the elephant in the room. In order to enter Cyrodiil, you have to go to the Alliance War, and then from all of you, you go to Campaigns, you'll select a campaign, either as a guest campaign or a home campaign. The difference between those two things is, home campaigns will count, like for your rewards and your total score. Well, I guess campaign, any scoring you do there will, it will not matter. If you, even if you did like 10 million alliance points in scoring there, you will not get any reward for it. You will not be able to be crowned emperor as none of your scoring there matters. You are just a guest there who is there for the PvP and that's it. The home campaign is the one that matters where your scoring goes for the emperorship and for the rewards at the end of the campaign. Depending on your scoring, you will get a certain reward. And of course, depending on if your faction wins or not. And secondly, what I directly want to address is how to get out of Cyrodiil, as a lot of people have this question. In order to get out of Cyrodiil, you cannot use the Transit to Sway Shrine, as that is the way to travel between keeps that we will cover later in this video. In order to get out of Cyrodiil, you have to use the standard Way Shrines. You just simply walk to them, just check the map, you can easily find them. Use the way shrine like you normally use the way shrine. Select any zone you want to and just port to that. And that's how you get out of Cyrodiil. This way you don't have to be worried about being stuck in Cyrodiil forever thinking, what have I done? Why have I entered it? And just wandering in Cyrodiil forever till the end of times. This is the way you just simply get out of Cyrodiil. These poor fellows were PvE players who never managed to get out of Cyrodiil. Let us never forget them. Each faction starts out initially with six home keeps, two outposts, and a town. Now, if you're new to Cyrodiil, it might be hard to know which keep or castle belongs to which faction, but there is an easy way for you to recognize it. Everything that belongs to the Deck of a Covenant is called a fort. So, Fort Warden, Fort Glade Mist, Fort Reels, Fort Ash, Fort Eelswell, and Fort Dragonclaw. Then, for the Ironheart Pact, it stops with a keep. So, King's Crest Keep, Arius Keep, Chowman Keep, Farragut Keep, Blue Road Keep, and Draco Keep. And then for the Almeri Dominion, it starts with Castle. Castle Bloodmane, Castle Blackboots, Castle Fagil, Castle Alessia, Castle Robeck, and Castle Brindle. Now, why is it in this important? Because there are bonuses in Cyrodiil. And there are several of them. First of all, we will be covering the Keeps bonuses so first of all you get a bonus for holding your home keeps that's what we just covered increase the experience ap gain and gold gain by five percent while in pvp you also get a small bonus for holding an enemy keep and it just stacks up every time pretty much with the increased experience ap and gold but when you start holding an enemy keep you also get one percent weapon critical and spell critical for holding an enemy keep like you can see it goes up by one percent for each keep you hold then there is also edge keep score bonuses and the edge keeps are the keeps that are on the outer side of the map so dragon claw drake low and brindle those are the edge keeps and they come with their own little bonus rewards for holding them as well so ownership of all the three keeps will give a 24 percent bonus to alliance points so holding the edge keeps can really increase your alliance points gain every time you hold one it's eight percent more then there are the bonuses to the Elder Scrolls. Now, Elder Scrolls on itself do not do much actually. When every faction holds their own home scroll, it doesn't give you any bonus. So if we just hold the blue scrolls as a day of a covenant, one offensive and one defensive, and the EP holds one of their own and the AD, 
no one really gets a bonus. Because you only start to get the bonus when you hold an enemy scroll. So if we go up back again here, you can see it. Holding a defensive scroll will give us a 2% increased physical and spell resistance. And an offensive scroll will give us 2% increased weapon and spell damage. And when we have both scrolls, both the enemy scrolls, it will be 5%. And then there is the Emperorship bonus. Increase max health by 35 per character level while in PvP. So, if you max level, this can actually be a decent amount. It can be like over 2k health. So that's, or almost 2k health when you are level 50 or CP level. It's almost 2k health that everyone will be getting. So it's a pretty strong bonus because it's faction wide. Now, how does one become Emperor or how does one get Emperor for a faction? In order to get Emperor, you simply need to hold the six keeps surrounding Cyrodiil. So Fort Aleswell, Chelman Keep, Blue Road Keep, Castle Alessia, Castle Robeck and Fort Ash. If you hold all these six keeps at the same time, you will be crowned, well, the number one scorer of your faction will be crowned Emperor. Note, he has to have a minimum of at least 50,000 AP gained before you can be crowned Emperor. So now currently the top one score is Heights in the corner and he just got crowned Emperor because we got the six keeps. I think it's actually for another campaign that I'm currently in. Yeah, it is. Now there are other things we didn't cover yet. First of all, we have resources. What resources do is obviously they give points. There is a whole point system in scoring here. So scoring potential points adds to the total amount of points your faction holds. And if your faction holds the most points, at the end of the campaign, your faction wins and the rewards for you will be better. So holding your home keeps actually gives double the points. So let's say we are deck for covenants. Holding our home keep will give us 10 points, while holding an enemy keep will only give us 5 points. So each keep, resource, elder scroll and outpost will give us points. So resources, what do resources do? Basically what resources do is they will upgrade your keep over time. For example, Fort Rayleigh's here has a 2 out of 2 wood. And what does wood upgrades do? They give us a high defensive siege cap so we can place more siege engines. Upgrade the archer guard abilities so the archers, the NPCs in here will be stronger. The stronger doors, the doors get more health. And door regen regeneration, the doors will heal automatically while outside of combat. The farm is pretty much buffing the guards mostly and the NPCs. So key managers will gain more powerful versions of their abilities. Key partner guards, key mages, you get the ID. Melee guards, they will all be become more powerful and they will all get more buffs. That's what the food upgrades do. And then there is the ore upgrades. The ore upgrades basically adds extra additions to the keep's defense, like siege platforms. For example, he, here you see some of these platforms. These are additions that will be spawned later once your keep has been upgraded more. So that's really nice because this is just an extra spot you can siege from nicely. And if it manage to deconstruct this, there will be no opening in the tower. This will just be destroyed. So it's just an extra spot you can siege back from by placing siege. And the other upgrades and ore or mine basically give to your to your keep is the guards have thicker armor, so they will be more resistant. And the keep walls will have more HP. Keep corners get an extra built out section. That's the current one. This is the corner out section. And those over there are the platforms, like right over here. The posts and platforms and the walls just like the doors will regenerate HP when not in combat. So what do the towns and outposts do you wonder? Well the outpost just like the name suggests is an outpost. Basically it gives you an extra spawning point from so you can launch new assaults more quickly. For example here if we want to attack Alessia and we have Sejanus outpost we can easily launch an attack by spawning at Sejanus and attack Alessia. Or when they retake Robeck, we can quickly port to Nickel and reinforce Robeck or attack it again. The towns are very easy to capture. The towns don't really have a lot of guards and they have three flags that you can capture. And what the towns basically do, they act as spawn points, just like an outpost. And you can also travel to them with the Transitus Way Shrine. And they also offer you a merchant where you can buy specialized gear. 
Now the towns are very nice because you can really travel here solo deep within enemy lines and you can take over a town solo and then your friends can teleport to it. So there are two ways to travel around Cyrodiil. Well, actually three. First of all, it's quite obviously you mount up and you just run to your objective and you just keep walking there and play the Elder Scrolls Horse Simulator online. It is also never possible to teleport to the opposite side of the map. So what I mean with that is if we are Day of a Covenant, the opposite side of the map is, for example, Drake Low Keep. Even if we manage to capture Drake Low Keep, the way shrine will never be open for us to teleport to it. Like you can see, you can see these locks here. Only the Evan Hard Pack can use this link. This one is locked for only the Day of a Covenant can use this link. And same here. So these two links are closed off for the Ebon Heart Pact. These two links are closed off for the Deck of a Covenant. And these two closed links are closed off for the Elmeri Dominion. And the two home keeps closest to your gate will never ever be portable either for your faction. So Fort Warden and Fort Drills, even if EP or AD captures them, they will never be able to port here as these shrine shrines or transit to way shrines are only usable for a dc same here for the Ebonheart pact with king's crest keep and farragut keep and same for the almary domain here with castle blackwood and castle bloodman like you can see only almary domain can use this link here here and here they probably do this to prevent like spawn camping to make it a little bit easier for the factions to retake their initial two home keeps so if this siege if this castle is now in the siege EP has to port here and then they have to walk away. I personally think this is great because again, if one faction is really dominating, it's just a little bit easier for the people here to retake one of the keeps and gives the offensive people a bit of a disadvantage. And last but not least, you can use teleport stones called keep recall stones to travel between keeps, outposts and town. So let's say you are in the middle of nowhere. You have to be away from a keep, town or outpost, by the way, in order to use this. So let's say we are here in the middle of nowhere. And I just quickly want to travel to Chelman. But I don't want to walk back to a keep firstly and then use a transitus way shrine. I can use a keep recall stone and I can teleport to any of the keeps. No matter if we hold the resources or not, as long as the keep is safe. So in this case... We can always teleport to the keep as long as it's not under siege or anything like that. So these are very simply bought with alliance points. You can buy them from any merchant at any place. For this to simply do, you have to find a merchant that is selling siege engines and stuff like this. And you will also find the keep recall stone. So for example over here we got the siege merchant. Let's talk to her. Siege merchant and here we go. Keep recall stone to... 20,000 alliance points. And that is pretty much everything I want to cover in this initial video. In the next series we'll be covering Cyrodiil and its siege engines. We will be talking about the metal gates, the bridges, the destructibles in this game. What are the best siege weapons to use? What, do, what does each siege weapon do, do? And how you can properly defend a keep or even take over a keep. There is a bit more to it than just like place down the siege engine and start sieging. There are actually some tactics you can use to quickly snatch the keep before the enemy can even react to you sieging the keep. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day. Check out learn learn ESO.net if you want to. I see you all in Tamriel. Bye bye.